Moonlight reveals the enigma of life. Sharon is poor, black, and homosexual. He is living in the unfortunate world where all three things individually weigh against you. Moonlight reveals Sharon in three separate stages of his life. A young boy, a teenager, and a grown man. Each stage of Sharon's self is characterized by a nickname, Little, Sharon, and Black. In the first stage of Sharon's life, Little's loneliness and pain are shown through his non-existent father and drug-addicted mother. These two early foundations begin to become a part of Little's self. Juan, a drug dealer and temporary father figure to Little, teaches him the basics of survival. Little learns just enough from Juan to keep his head above the water. In the second stage, Sharon is a quiet, skinny, homosexual going to an urban Miami high school. Juan is out of his life, and Sharon is at his mental and physical capacity. Due to his drug-addicted mother, Palm is still as loveless and hateful as ever before. Sharon's high school is a hostile atmosphere filled with fear. The other students can tell that Sharon is different and seek to make examples out of him. The weight of his life is too much for Sharon to carry. Sharon's innocence is at a breaking point. In the final act, we are introduced to the third stage of Sharon, Black, a muscular drug dealer that is a byproduct of this cruel world. After the life of pain, Black's muscular physique has become the armor that now protects him. The drugs that were once the source of Little and Sharon's pain has now become Black's profession. Having known no one else, Black has become the spitting image of his father figure, Juan. With the world always against him, Sharon has never learned how to become his own self. Well, Barry, you made a phenomenal film. <laughs> Thank it, you. I, after seeing the theater, I was just kind of speechless for a minute, very oh. meditative. What is it like to take a script like that that is very mm -hmm. much about coming to terms with your sexuality mm -hmm. and your identity as, as a gay man, a mm -hmm. gay black man? What was that like for you, adapting mm -hmm. it and putting your voice and your, your mindset inside of that story? I'm a straight man who has, I feel like, compassion and empathy. Um, and yet that empathy is passive, you know, unless you're creating things, you know, to try to address these issues, to try to, you know, try to find solutions uh, for the mistreatment that, that certain people undergo just for being who they are. So I like to say I approach uh, the story from a place of empathy, you know, active empathy. You know, if you're a writer and you're not writing actively about LGBTQ causes, then how much of, a, of, of, of an ally are you? Next is a BuzzFeed interview from queer black men and their take on the film. Fun. It's gonna be a fun, and I was like, "Ooh, Jesus!" When I saw it. Some moments that really resonated for me from Moonlight were, I suppose, the scenes at the end. You know, these two guys are reunited, and there's this tension. What's gonna happen? You know, are they gonna wrestle? Are they gonna punch each other? Are they gonna kiss? Juan telling Little in the ocean to lay his head back. I got you. There you go. Ten seconds. I don't know. You you realize in that moment how much how much of your life you split flinched up in the company in the physical company of other black men. It's more like you see like the internal struggle, and I think that that was so beautiful because like I feel like that resonated with me so much. The school bullying that thing was so real, like. That hit home so hard. How many ways in which have I not allowed myself to live this or been able to even envision myself living this because of not having seen it? We need examples. That's how we learn and that's how we grow. I just hope that in the future there are more movies that are made like this. I just want to see more versions of relationships. I want to see monogamous married couples with kids. I want to see trans and cis men in love with each other. We need more stories. Hopefully the success of it means something. That this success allows for other success in the way that, you know, marginal people have always sort of, you know, waited for, for the one and then people stand on the shoulders and, and, and try and progress it forward. The existence of Moonlight and the fact that it's getting a um, acknowledgement, winning awards, um, people are seeing it. That's progress, but also I think it's really sad that we have this one movie, The Champion. For me, the future representation is us looking at a film like Moonlight and us removing the titles and it not being a film about black gay men. 
you know, if the future is us looking at a film like Moonlight and saying, this is a film about identity, about exploration. At the very end, it was just like a beautiful journey of someone who wasn't quite sure of themselves to, in my um, perspective, like being like very comfortable with who he was as a man. You know, if you've ever questioned your identity or, you know, you ever had difficulty forming it, especially, you know, if you had trauma in your childhood and your youth, this is, this is that film for you. I'm glad that there's a movie like this that like has challenged that and shown that like we are out there um, and we are people who are like deserving of love.